Greetings and Happy New Year to all of you. This is David Gauci. Dave Nagel and I welcome you to the seventh session in the Business and Energy Talk series of Forum 2100. Forum 2100 is an initiative to promote constructive dialogue on business opportunities in the energy domain. Today, it is our distinct pleasure to feature Eric Nelson, CEO of SAF Systems. An architect by education and practice, Eric is a building energy systems expert with extensive experience in deploying passive energy solutions in Switzerland over the past 15 years. For the next 18 minutes, Eric will introduce you to a novel passive solar concept that is poised to be a potential industry disruptor. At the end of the presentation, we shall field questions from you, the members of the audience. Please use the private chat function in Zoom to submit your questions at any point during or after the presentation. Eric, welcome to Forum 2100. You are now addressing an interested audience that spans about nine different time zones. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, David. Okay, as mentioned, my name is Eric Nelson. I'm the CEO of SAF Systems. And what I'm going to do today, I would like to introduce you to a new generation of sustainable solar active building schemes. We call SAF or SAF for solar activated facade. Um, we know we have a big problem with greenhouse gases coming from buildings. Uh, indeed, it is, a, it is a very big problem. Globally, roughly 40% of the CO2 emissions are caused by buildings and within the building sector alone, probably about two thirds to a three quarter is attributable just to building operations alone. While the other third uh, to one quarter is within the embodied carbon of the building materials. Those are um, the resources, the mining process, um, what it takes for transportation, manufacturing, those building components, putting them together and at the end of their um, life cycle to dispose them as well. That's the energy that goes into that. The common solutions today are primarily focused on reducing the operational CO2 emissions. That means increasing the energy efficiency uh, of the building by creating high performance building envelopes. So um, the way we do it typically is we actually add a lot of insulation to the building envelope and uh, right now you see a graph of a variety of typical insulation materials that are out there on the market. However, we also recognize that, let's say the more eco-friendly building materials such as cellulose or wood wool on the bottom of that graph that have a low embodied energy content are not as high performing as a little bit the more engineered um, higher energy, higher embodied energy uh, materials such as perhaps glass wool, EPS, or even polyurethane. And that is a real problem. And interestingly too, is that actually 90% of the market share is dominated by glass wool or glass fiber or uh, EPS. But those insulation materials have um, inherently their own problems that they have. Issues that we have with such thermal insulations are, for example, that um, they require a lot of space. So if you choose to pick a more eco-friendly insulation material, you'll end up with much thicker walls. Um, the environmental impact of such insulation materials, we know a lot of them are fossil based, uh, meaning that they're using finite resources. Some of them have detrimental impact on the environmental pollution, such as, uh, again, EPS, uh, foam pla uh, the, the plastic problems we're having with pollution uh, generated by those, as well as the embodied energy that goes into those insulation materials. And even more to that health impact that we have on many insulation materials as well that we commonly use, which are either toxic or known to be carcinogenic, neurotoxins or have a lot of VOCs. They can also irritate your eye, skin, lung uh, while installation and also produce a lot of off-gassing um, such as uh, spray foams do. So these insulation materials have a lot of problems um, that go along with them. But in order for us to meet these climate goals, we have to also think about eliminating embodied energy. Otherwise we will not meet our goals 
So uh, I would like to quickly shift a little bit the focus here. There is a problem with adopting green measures. We have a lot of green measures out there, but it seems to be pretty difficult to experience green. So what am I talking about is that the green measures that we have, you most of the time you can't see it. It's either invisible, or if you do see it, it may actually just be flat out ugly. So it's hard to motivate people, even though they have a rising conscience that they should invest in green measures. Uh, most of the time they're driven by emotions. They'd much rather take their buck and invest it into a nice kitchen, um, beautiful bathroom, or a nice fancy SUV. So this is what we're fighting against. We have a lot of good technology out there that essentially um, will always be the first one to be cut when budget restraints start to apply to projects. So how do we go about? Well, we look at Tesla. Tesla managed to do something very ingenious. They came up with an absolutely fancy, high-powered, uh, good-looking car and managed to actually put quite a dent into the conventional car uh, industry by coming up with a beautiful, uh, sexy-looking, high-performing car. Well, we want to do the same thing. We want to do the same thing for building envelopes. And we call it SAF for solar activated facade. So we want to be the Tesla of the building envelope industry. And we want to combine the emotional experience that this architecture provokes with the conscience of having a green, eco friendly system at hand. So this is a project in Liechtenstein. We can see this beautiful um, SAF system, which is essentially wood and glass. And the wood is protected by a layer of glass, so it doesn't turn, it doesn't wither, it doesn't turn gray. Uh, so it maintains its natural beauty for a very long time. It is extremely high performing. So with SAF, you can save up to 90% on heating and cooling emissions. This is a project in the Swiss Alps. As a matter of fact, the PV system on the roof you see here produces enough energy to fuel the Tesla that you just saw before in the garage. And it is really, truly sustainable. Um, it saves up to 85% on carbon emissions compared to conventional uh, building envelope solutions. Again, there's another project in Switzerland. This one actually received the second Norman Foster Solar Award, and it is also uh, certified and has more energy production than it actually uses. So what is SAF or what is SAF? It's a solar active exterior wall panel made of wood and glass. And similar to the principles of passive solar heat gain uh, through windows, as you see in the top little uh, cartoon there, the low incidence angle of the sun will allow the sun to penetrate the system and charge the core of sap, which absorbs the energy, and then it slowly discharges that energy throughout the night, counteracting the heat loss from the inside out. Then in the summertime, as the days get longer and the sun is higher and higher on the sky with a higher solar incidence angle, there's a natural mechanism that will actually start preventing absorbing too much energy, too much heat, uh, first of all, by partial reflection of, of the solar radiation, also about, uh, by the internal slats that create a self-shading effect, so the core is effectively shaded from the direct impact of the sun, and then also the gap, the air gap between the glass and the wood slat system um, is rear ventilated so the hot air can escape. We see uh, on the image there a panel, what it looks like before installation. So the solar factor is absolutely incredible. Um, the solar factor can save a lot of valuable energy by retaining solar heat. And in the graph, it's the red graph, and brown being the radiation peaks. This is during a winter series, very cold. It's uh, 0 to minus 10, 12 degrees Celsius. But the warmer outer surface means that it, require, it has less heat loss. It requires less heating energy. And thereby, you can reduce your operational carbon emissions tremendously. 
but it also saves a lot of resources, unlike conventional systems that require a lot of insulation, is that the warm outer surface that has been uh, heated up by the sun requires less insulation, less resources, and thereby reduces the embodied carbon within the building envelope tremendously. Um, the Valley of Saf is, is, is quite unique in that sense, is that um, we can really create lean and green buildings. Uh, we don't have fat walls, and uh, we can really avoid using um, highly um, toxic or, or, let's say, embodied energy materials. Uh, so it absolutely looks great. It looks amazing with its eco-modern design. It can save a tremendous amount of energy, up to 90%, which means, of course, lots of dollars saved as well. It saves resources, reduces carbon emissions up to 85% compared to conventional systems. It also provides a healthy indoor climate and comfort. It is free of health and environmental concerns. And it is extremely low tech, durable, it requires very little maintenance because your building skin, your outer surface is glass. And that, the beauty of it all, is at no extra cost. Any initial investment that you have up front is offset by a lot of cost avoided by using less insulation, by having smaller mechanical systems that you need to install, of course, by the energy savings that you have, but also and not to be underestimated, the space gain that you get with much thinner walls, especially if you're restricted by uh, um, setback lines or so. So uh, how has this uh, technology been deployed so far? So in Europe, this, uh, this system has been developed and uh, engineered and designed by an architect called Giuseppe Fent uh, with his company Lucido Solar and it's been successfully commercialized for quite a while uh, in Switzerland and surrounding, company, uh, surrounding countries. So we have access to that. As a matter of fact, I am a former employee of that company and uh, working with him has uh, been an absolutely splendid experience. So with his experience, we have 20 years of experience in applying this technology. It's been built many, many, many times and continuously approved with every iteration that has been built. Uh, because there's always been a lot of measurements, field tests going into it, and improvements coming out of that. It has a proven performance record. So most buildings, um, basically all the buildings are ultra low energy buildings or net near zero energy buildings. Some of them that have PV systems included are plus energy buildings, and quite a few of them are Minergy certified. Minergy is our uh, Swiss um, energy standard label. There's a few variations, Minergy, Minergy P, Minergy P Echo. Um, one of our more stringent labels is pretty close to the Passive House label, the German Passive House label, which you may be familiar with. And uh, several of these buildings have also won um, different design awards. The uh, application is quite, has quite broad range and we have a lot of experience uh, in the residential sector, new construction as well as retrofits, single family, uh, and all the way up to 12 stories. What you see bottom left is a recent development, a recent project that is a 12 story building, which is uh, with, equipped with affordable housing units. So it can be affordable as well as high end and also it has been applied to many commercial buildings uh, in new construction as well as retrofit, different sizes. Uh, of course, for the commercial buildings, there's also a, a significant corporate identity that goes with it because of this strong architectural expression that we have. But the European market is owned by Lucida Solar, as I mentioned before, the original developer. So the big question is for me, well, what about North America? Hmm, well, North America is a huge market and it's an up and coming market. Uh, the Europeans have been leading the way in sustainability for the past couple of decades, but also North America has a lot of um, applications, possible applications for this technology. 
which we can deploy in typically a four season climate. Uh, here it's designated in uh, climate zones four, five, and six. But also depending, we could probably reach into the climate zone seven and maybe at times reach into climate zone three. So this is a huge market that has been untapped and uh, especially now as North America is really starting to gain momentum in catching up with Europe on know-how and technology. So uh, just looking at the addressable market, we're looking at over 10 billion in possible market that we can address. So we at SAP Systems, we are a Swiss US Canadian company um, led by myself and we are responsible for developing the North American market. We have all the rights secured to manufacture, produce and market the system and also further develop the system as we go along. And we have a close informal relationship with our Swiss counterpart, but we are completely independent. So I just want to quickly mention a little bit what our business uh, aspect and model is going to be in this venture um, as we are considered right now a startup. So um, our business model is that we sell SAF as original equipment manufacturers to licensed partners who would then market and sell SAF for us. Uh, the estimated cost to the end user, which includes uh, any commissions, any margin, as cetera, and fully installed uh, is about 55 to $65 a square foot. And in competition to traditional cladding systems, now we're just looking at cladding systems because I think this is the defining competition is what we look like, is the, is the exterior building skin. Um, it's somewhere between about $30 and $60 a square foot, although um, some cladding systems can be up to $120 a square foot. But any higher cost that we have, we can offset by the cost avoided, which I mentioned earlier. Um, also, uh, we're looking into other revenue streams to where we would like to offer um, and help and uh, offer design of SAF houses. We have uh, tremendous partners in Europe as well as Canada and the US. And we would like to offer our know-how in collaboration, uh, engineering, consulting, perhaps uh, do entire projects and maybe long-term uh, business could also be actually built and developed SAF houses. If we find um, the right partners to do that with, we'd be very interested in hearing more. So uh, to all the real estate developers out there, um, that was just a little hint. So we are working with a lot of uh, local people in this. So what we do, we have it locally manufactured by a third party. And then we try to distribute it through a network of licensed partners. We work with locally trained and certified contractors that will install SAF for us. And of course, the architects and the engineers are the ones that will be doing the integration into the project. And at the end, um, the customer receives a system that is highly energy efficient and as well also very architecturally highly appealing. And we all, at the end, we all profit from less CO2 emissions. Our role is that we uh, give the specs to everything. We um, support our partners. And uh, of course, we um, offer the quality control and warranty in all the steps. So we have a lot of market traction already that we have no single building uh, in the market yet, but we have a lot of positive feedback from designers, architects, the media. We've already located the first investor, the Swiss real estate developer, uh, who is looking to invest 500 million into the Montreal area. Also several other project opportunities. Uh, we have a growing professional and academic network. There are a lot of government programs out there and grant opportunities that we can, uh, that we're already participating in or are looking to take advantage of. And the building codes are becoming increasingly more favorable to energy efficiency and reducing CO2 emissions. But what we really need at this point is actually we are in the process of raising capital. Uh, this is uh, the most crucial step for us right now that we can actually convert on our business plan, set up operations, test and certify the product and build a demonstration project. Uh, there are some figures on here. Feel free to go back and look at them if you're interested in working with us. 
We are looking for angel investors, industrial partners, real estate developers. Um, so we're looking to get a quick and easy deal so we can move forward and bring this incredible system to North America. I would like to close off with our final slide, which is the potential in our technology. And I just want to reiterate how important it is that we get a chance to bring this technology onto the ground. Uh, we have to show what it can do and also have the ability to explore more opportunities. We can introduce PV cells into our system. As you can see, we can also use the hot air within the ventilated space that can be supplied to heat pumps or for direct ventilation. The possibilities of this solar technology is immense. So I hope um, I was able to give you an introduction to this quite unique system. I want to close off with saying that we want to become North America's leading provider of sustainable solar active building skins by driving the transition towards zero emissions, energy self-sustainable buildings. Okay. Eric, thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. We have a number of questions for you uh, that have bubbled up uh, during the last 18 or so minutes. Uh, the first one, let's just hit this directly, uh, relates to the retrofit, retrofit market. Um, you, when you made the comparisons, you were talking about, I believe, new construction. Uh, but um, much of the cost advantages that you presented were relating to offsetting the cost of uh, building with thinner walls, lower cost of insulation, and reduced energy use. But in the retrofit market, it would seem that perhaps the first two of these uh, offsets kind of go away since the design is, is already complete. So how does the business case work for the retrofit market? Um, I, I guess I would have to mention that retrofitting is, is definitely more challenging than the new construction. And of course, there's so many parties involved. Uh, you need good engineers, mechanical engineers, you need a good designer um, to optimize the projects and really be able to keep the costs under control. On our end though, what is to be mentioned is that the technology is actually so low tech, the performing uh, aspect of this technology doesn't really cost a lot of money. It's in this case, it's some wood specific, specially milled with uh, specific geometric um, re requirements and glass. Either material is not, doesn't cost a lot of money. What drives the cost in our system is primarily the architectural integration. So if we, if we actually add engineering, we can engineer the system to make it cheaper. And most often it's the reverse. As soon as you start engineering, it becomes more expensive. So it's kind of a case by case uh, situation that there are a lot of um, examples in Switzerland, very successful examples where the costs have been minimized uh, tremendously by, by good engineering, good design. We believe we can do the same thing, but in the retrofit, we would like to get into the prefabricated wall panel systems. Hmm. So we could simplify um, installation, a lot of steps of our, our system by integrating it into prefabricated walls that include uh, windows, electrical, like everything. And uh, certainly requires some engineering and some, some, some work, but uh, again, we can offset, we can make our system so much thinner than with conventional insulation methods, which in itself has a lot of benefits. Be able to apply a thin wall to cover a, uh, an existing building as opposed to a pretty thick wall for high performance. Okay, uh, another question. Um, are there any size limitations to using your cladding system? In other words, is there any space that would be too small to be effective or too large to be practical? So for um, example- I think one of the early pictures showed kind of a, a pretty large slab of it. Um, so there are elements, prefabricated elements. We would say probably in height, it's, the limitation is primarily the glass that we receive. Uh, mm -hmm. Could be restricted about 10 feet in height, uh, perhaps about seven, eight feet in width. But uh, it's, it's definitely, it can get pretty big. Uh, when you start getting too small, it, it, yeah, it just becomes expensive and kind of, I, I don't think it's really uh, architecturally appealing to have foot by foot low <laughs> tiles. Okay. But, but um, could, it, could, could the product be installed as, uh, for example, as window blinds or could it be on a 40 story building? Uh, Forty-story building. Yeah, I mean, right now we're a combustible cladding system, and uh, the, mm -hmm. there's opportunities to actually change the material 
and create um, make it non-combustible. This is definitely a subject to uh, the twelve-story building that he saw used actually a different material uh, on the on the facade side that did not have any balconies. So it was wood on the sides with the balconies because of the the fire stop in between, between the floors. But where there weren't any fire stop balconies there, um, it was actually a light uh, weight concrete material. Okay. So um, uh, that's definitely a, in our business plan, uh, subject to future uh, product development to work with different materials and okay. uh, overcome the fire issue. Otherwise, we are subjected to standard um, you know, protocol uh, guidelines, which is up to six stories, I believe, at least in Canada. Okay. So we have another question uh, that has uh, come out, which is the low maintenance raises the question of fading over time. Um, but with the glass cover, it would seem that maintenance when done would be very expensive. Is, is this right? Or can you give us some insight into this? Well, I think for one thing is uh, you, you, you shouldn't confuse it with a window. You're not going to have the spotless transparency necessary through windows where probably in high rises, they clean windows once every six months or so. <laughs> no, the, the, uh, because it's such a smooth surface, there's, a, there's minimal um, dirt accumulation that actually happens and most of it washes off just by regular rain. Uh, because it's opaque, um, we do not have to abide by the same standards as actually a transparent window that you look through as in an as in a office building, a 40-story office building. So uh, no, we do not, uh, in, in all the uh, buildings that have been done in Switzerland, none of them have ever been washed. Uh, some buildings have already existed for almost uh, 15, 15 years. As a matter of fact, there's a slide in this presentation uh, where I show with the four pictures. Um, that building was uh, built in 2003. The wood has barely faded, has barely changed color throughout, you know, 15 plus years. So it requires water, the rain and UV to actually change, uh, to really change the color and make it fade quickly. So the natural beauty of the wood is really preserved for, for an extremely long time. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, another question. Uh, back to the business case. Uh, what causes the variation in the price that you uh, quoted, 30 to $60 per square foot? Uh, 30 to 60 was, was actually uh, the competition. But okay. um, <laughs> there's, it's a cl it's cladding system, so yeah. there's a wide variation in that. Our variation in price will, will be uh, by the size of the, uh, let's say by the roster, um, tentatively the larger the panels, the lower the cost. But um, you can also pick a higher grade wood. Um, we typically have, to, in Switzerland, it used to be, or it still is, of course, pine or large. Mm. Um, in North America, we're more likely to work with Douglas fir as, as a premium wood. And if you integrate PV, uh, PV cells into it, of course, that will drive the price. Um, so, it's, so, it's, uh, so it's mainly the, the type of wood that you choose and whether you include PV or not, or whether you actually include uh, ventilation in it or not, which was uh, the very last, last slide that I presented. Okay. So really, really quickly, 20 seconds. How does your experience in the Swiss market apply to the North American market, do you think? Um, I think it... There's a lot, because Europe has been really probably 20 years ahead of North America, there's a lot that we can bring. But of course, uh, you cannot take your building standards and impose it on North America. It just, it just doesn't work. So you have to work with the local professionals. And I think that's what we're working on. We're looking for the best local professionals in the sustainable building market. And we're trying to marry, marry and collaborate and really bring our knowledge and, uh, uh, together in collaboration. So. I think that produces the best solutions if we work together. Great. Eric, thank you very much. This brings us to the formal close of our online session. We shall post the recording of this session on our website, www.forum2100.org, in the event that you would like to review it, along with Eric's contact information. The presentation will be up, both the, the audio and video here, as well as the slides. Um, and please share it with others whom you think might, be, might have an interest in, in, in looking at this. As we are building the audience around the globe, please do pass the information on the Business and Energy Talks to anyone else you think might be interested. So please join us for our next talk in the series on Tuesday, the 19th of March at 11.30 Eastern Time. 
uh, our presenter will be Steve Wittrick. He will be speaking on the topic ammonia as fuel. You might know that if decarbonization is a goal for modern economies, then this is a talk you really need to hear. You will be able to find a brief biographical profile of Steve on the website within the next 24 hours. If you or a colleague have an idea for a talk, please visit our website to submit a proposal to us for a talk to be included in the series. Dave Nagel and I wish you well, and we look forward to welcoming you and your colleagues to Steve Wittrig's talk on Tuesday, 19th of March. Thanks very much today to Eric Nelson for his presentation, and thanks to all of you for joining us today as well. Bye for now.